Welcome to my version of Battle Mage, you magical bastards. This one was quite a headache, mostly because there are so many spells to choose from and so many passives, so point distribution was such pain in the arse. Wasted so much time trying to get this together and I think I finally found the perfect balance between DPS and tankiness. Focus of this build is to use your melee weapon to hurt enemies who are trying to disengage from you and to hurt them a lot while also casting some nasty spells that will do amazing AoE damage. I'm using combination of Unbroken Fighter with no subclass wizard because we are using lots of different spells so there's no point in specializing in anything. Unbroken gives us plus one engagement, increased penetration on disengagement attacks, which is our really most damaging attack next to couple of spells when enemies try to disengage. And we also gain shield mastery, providing bonus armor rating while wearing a shield. For race, I've chosen fire godlike, but it's not necessary. Nature godlike is awesome, moon godlike is fantastic with this. So it's up to you. Fire godlike gives you our bloodied or near death additional armor rating and we do some burn damage to anyone who hits us in melee and we are also resistant to burn damage these are my stats might base is 16 we need might because of the healing and damage with the spells these are our primary ways of dealing damage next to disengagement attacks Constitution is enough at 10, you can boost it through a couple of more items. Dexterity I've put at 10, but I do have a godlike and plus 1 dexterity from the background, so at the moment it's 12. Dexterity is not the most important stuff here, but don't go into minus, since we are casting a lot. If you have minus, then your cast time is gonna be longer, which you do not want. Perception I've put at 14 just, just so that we can get that little boost to accuracy when striking the enemies be it with spells or disengagement attacks. Intellect is really important. I went with 15 here and plus one from godlike. 16 is more than enough to add plenty of length to spells that we are using and also it adds nice area of effect to the damaging spells that we're gonna cast on our enemies. Resolve is at 10, I did not want to go into minus since we are tanks, but I couldn't put any more points in it. Anyway, this is very balanced build and with couple of defensive spells, really defense is not a problem. That's also one of the reasons why I've left Resolve at 10. Now for the active abilities. Let's cover the fighter skill tree first. We're gonna use upgraded discipline strikes to tactical barrage, mainly because of the intellect and plus one to all power levels. If you use this and then use any other spells that's got duration as their component, then you're gonna prolong the duration of the spell, which I find very useful. Also, we're gonna use guardian stance. We get plus engagements and also minus 5% damage taken per engaged target, which is huge. That, that's a huge buff. Now, if you're soloing with this character, then you need unbending. If you're not soloing, there's no need to take this. It's an overkill because you can have a weak healer next to you and you won't die. From the passives, go for rapid recovery. It's really a nice boost to your healing overall. And with higher might, you're gonna restore more health. Things that are must besides that. Confident aim mainly because we need to be sure that we're gonna hit with this engagement attack. As for the weapon that you wanna be proficient with, you choose for yourself. I didn't really use modal abilities that much. Determination is a nice defensive boost. Obviously weapon and shield style. We're gonna use small shield. Small shield does not have accuracy debuff. Combat focus is a must. But you can take that from the wizard tree, you don't need to spend points in this part for that. Specialize weapon into weapon mastery. It just means that our disengagement attacks are gonna be extremely painful. Armored Grace. Overbearing Guard. The rest are pretty much optional. 
I went with improved critical, because I always like to do that. I am casting some spells and doing some damage, so why not have that increased 10% damage. We already will have enough defensive bonuses from the spells that we're gonna use, so why the hell not. I also took Uncanny Luck, but that's optional as well. And you have Superior Deflection and Spell Resistance, but I would not take Superior Deflection, there's no need, you only get plus 4. And we're gonna get plenty of it through the spells that we're casting. But if you're so desperate, take it. I didn't. And there's one cool trick that you can do, and that is with Quick Switch. I mean, you can do it without the Quick Switch, but it's much better with Quick Switch. Since the recovery will be much lower. Every time you switch weapon set when enemies are engaged with you, they will have to pass a check. If they don't pass that check, they're gonna be knocked on their arse. It's because of the Guardian stance. You will not do any damage, but the beautiful thing about it is, if you knock them down, you will interrupt their casting, so that's huge. It's a bug, most definitely, because this should not be working. You can constantly switch weapons, and if they don't pass the check, they will be knocked on their arse, and interrupted while at it. Let's first cover the passives here, because the spells depend on your Grimoire, which I'm gonna cover separately now. What you need is combat focus, which I already said. I also went with increased penetration with freeze and burn spells. Uncanny luck. Rapid casting. Far casting is also an option, but I did not have any more points left. So I did not use it. And that's it from the passives. As for the grimoires, there are really some nice ones that are low level. For example, spell rights grimoire. This will give you spirit shield. Langrand Safeguard, Capricious Hex, Piercing Burst, which is a very powerful spell, Chaotic Orb as well. These are all nice spells, so what you're gonna do often with the Battle Mage is retrain, depending on the Grimoire that you're using. These points that you're putting into spells can be used much better. So instead of putting, for example, one point into Spirit Shield and you already have it in the Grimoire, put it on a passive from Warrior Tree so that you can be tankier. So this is a good one. There's also Slaver's Grimoire. This one's got Exposed Vulnerabilities, also Capricious Hex, Gaze of the Adrogan, but it's not as good. Spell Rights Grimoire is better. Then, for example, Skeletal Wizard's Grimoire, Death Ring, Killing Bolt, Chaotic Orb, Minor Arcane Reflection is nice. Miasma, Spirit Shield, Chill Fog, Merciless Gaze, these are all nice spells that you can have. As for the ones that you should focus on, that are especially good, from power level 1, use Chill Fog and Spirit Shield. Spirit Shield is very good early game until you get to Langrand's Displaced Image. So when you get to power level 3, then you retrain and remove point from Spirit Shield, because you'll be using this instead of Spirit Shield. As for the offensive spells from first three power levels, as I already said, Chill Fog is a must. Merciless Gaze is a nice optional thing if you want, it's gonna last a long time, and it can convert some hits to crits, so why the hell not? Power level three, Langras Displaced Image, and Expose Vulnerabilities. Power level four, Flame Shield is a nice one. It's gonna give you plus 10 freeze armor rating. This works very well with this. This thing does a lot of damage and it does it over time, so reduced freeze damage for the initial burst will be very helpful. Freezing Pillar will remove Flame Shield, but at least you're gonna mitigate the first strike. I would take it, but it's optional. If you don't like it, then choose something like Minor Arcane Reflection if you don't have it from the Grimoire. From the level 5, I went with Torrent of Flame, very useful when you're surrounded by enemies. And this one is a must, Langrand Safeguard. This thing will keep you alive without any issues, and it lasts for a long bloody time, especially if you use Discipline Strikes and then Langrand Safeguard. When you get to power level 5 and Langrand Safeguard, then Displaced Image becomes useless. 
So what you need to do is again retrain and pick something else. From the power level 6, Freezing Pillar is a must. Death Ring is optional. This is a good one as well, Arcane Reflection. And Piercing Burst is amazing as well, as long as the enemies are not immune to pierce damage around you. If they're not, this can be devastating. From the power level 7, Killing Bolt is amazing, because if you kill an enemy with it, you gain a Spectre under your control, which can help a lot. And what I particularly like is Titan's Chaotic Orb. This thing can put so many debuffs on enemies, it's ridiculous. Do not use this, because spell casting will be disabled for 30 seconds. As for the gear, I went with plate armor, so that we can get that high armor rating. We need to survive, and that's the whole point of it. Damage is the second thing that we're gonna do, but the first thing is to survive. I don't really have many fantastic grimoires, so I'm using Ningout's teachings. As a grimoire, it's got some nice spells that I like to use, like Ningal's Death Ray when trying to kill one enemy fast. Shadow Flame is good as well. Torrent of Flame, Death Ring, Freezing Pillar is a must, so if you don't have Grimoire with it, take it. And Killing Bolt is also fantastic, although I failed at every attempt in this video to make it work. Now for the combat demonstration. <clears throat> there are a couple of things to consider here. Before everything we need to use Disciplined Strikes and then we use Safeguard. With that the Safeguard will last for about 2 minutes or something like that, which is ridiculously long considering how great defensively that bloody spell is. You can probably figure out my thought process for this build. Surround myself by enemies and then cast some nasty AoE spells while also surviving all of it since I'm a tanky bastard. Note couple of things. First throw down expose vulnerabilities. Then throw down freezing pillar. It will do an insane amount of damage. After that you can use for example death ring if you see some enemies that are close to dying. And you also have torrent of flame. All pretty nice AoE spells. So you are not just a tank that's gonna stand there and take damage, you're gonna dish out some damage as well. Be careful with Disciplined Strikes. They give you concentration initially, but opponents can interrupt that concentration by using various types of attacks. So before you cast a huge spell like Freezing Pillar or Killing Bolt that you only have one or two available for the whole combat, cast Disciplined Strikes before that spell. That will put concentration back again. Just check your status bar, scroll over to your character and check if you have concentration active or not. That's really it, that's the whole setup. You use Discipline Strikes, Safeguard, go amongst the enemies, do your thing, if they disengage they will be hurt a lot, and then use spells as you see fit, depending on your opponent's resistances and so on. Be careful when casting Fire and Frost spells. Don't cast them at the same place, because if they have damage over time component, then they're gonna cancel each other. That would be all, I hope you enjoyed the build, thank you for watching and see you soon.